By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a match between Martin and Carl. And it's not just a match, it is the finals of the Frost Giant Cup. So you could view all the matches here that we've had on stream starting at round one. We've taken you all the way to this point, the finals of the Frost Giant Cup, with the big question, who is going to be the winner of 2019? Now, on the left side, we have Martin, and he's playing with a four-color spice deck. Now, you've seen Martin in action in the quarterfinals. You've seen him win that match. You've seen him win the match in the semifinals, and now he has earned his spot in the finals. And he's playing against Carl, a player from Belgium, and he's playing with the deck. And I believe we saw him in action in round four, where he beat a... Tron deck that was playing with the Sword of the Ages mix. Very cool match, by the way. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can check it out uh, now before you see the finals would be uh, would be my advice. Um, but about the finals. So before we're going to the actual game number one, I actually have a deck picture of Carl's deck. So I would like to look at that briefly and discuss it with you. If you'd like to go straight to the games, you can just check the description below and there's a timestamp and that will take you directly to game number one. Okay, so this is the list of Carl. This is what he's bringing to the table and he has reached the finals with this list So he must be doing something really well now Obviously, we all know the deck and we know that it's a very good and efficient deck uh, You know when you play with these cards you have a good chance to reach a top eight even a final and even winning a tournament now looking at this specific version of the deck what i notice is that single copy artifact there in the list that's an interesting choice and you can see that he's really geared up against artifact decks and of course in old school you see a lot of artifacts so that that makes sense because he's not only playing with four disenchant he also has a divine offering there uh, in his deck as well and that can also give him some life because he is playing with city of brasses and of course the deck can sometimes be vulnerable to very quick and aggressive decks and kind of get into this low life total situation and by using a divine offering on for instance a suchi that's something that i witnessed because i've actually played carl in this tournament that can just give him the space he needs to get control back and eventually win the game now another thing that i notice and once again i'm not especially one specialist when it comes to the deck maybe a specialist in losing against it uh, but not a specialist in playing with it but what i notice with this list are the four tomes so it's really heavy on on, on the tomes and i mean he does what we're used to you know what you're used to when you're playing a the deck player he wants to deny you from doing anything just make one for one trades with the swords the disenchant with the counter spells and then maybe make some better trades uh, using a balance and obviously his true goal is just deny you from doing anything and take card advantage and eventually winning because he draws more resources and he can kind of like drain you out in that way so you're throwing away your resources and he's keeping his resources because he's stocking on new spells and cards because of his whole card draw engine um, now let's have a look at the sideboard so what i noticed there are two dust to dust so it's evident he's really geared up against those artifact creatures also we see two beautiful sarah angels so maybe the thought about that is if i play against if I play after the first game, my opponent is going to board out some creature hate and I can put my Sarah Angels in. So that could be the case, of course. And when he's playing against a creature heavy deck, obviously he has the Abyss to use. Um, he also has some red Elemental Blast, some blue Elemental Blast. That's not really special. Uh, Tranquilities, I think, are, are really important. We see more and more enchantment decks these days, so I think that's a very good decision. And main board, by the way, um, before I end this part and we're going to go to the games, main board he is playing with a red elemental blast i think this is a very good choice all the top decks are playing blue power so i mean in worst case scenario you have an answer to those blue power spells and in general a lot of old school players tend to play with blue in their decks now now that we've had a look at this beautiful deck of carl uh, unfortunately i don't have a deck picture still of the four color spice deck but we've seen it in action in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. So I assume you have a pretty good picture of Martin's deck. So let's now quickly go to game number one and see what's going to happen. Game number one. And here we go. And on the left side with the black sleeves, we have Martin. He's playing the four color spice deck. And on the right side, we have Carl and he's playing the deck. And this is going to be interesting. I believe it's Martin on the play here. 
and he's Martin has already defeated uh, a the deck player in the semifinals where he played against Mari. So let's see how this is going to turn out. Playing a Mox Ruby and a Volcanic Island passing turn, a Tundra here and a Mox Pearl. So that's a good opening. Look at that quick shatter on the Pearl here. Playing a Mox Jet, City of Brass, and an Urnum Jin. And there's a quick sword to Plowsiers here. So that means four extra life for Martin going to 24. Or should I say 23, because of course he took a damage from his own City of Brass. And look at this, he's tapping four mana again, playing another Urnum. And does Carl have an answer? And he does another source to Plowsiers here at the end step, meaning four more life for Martin. I mean, he is going through his swords pretty quickly, and there is a time walk. So he's taking an extra turn, finding a basic island, and then passing turn. So that's not too bad for Martin. And what can he do? Can he keep the pressure on the board? And this is interesting, playing a Demonic Tutor. And what can he look for? Usually you see them look for an Ancestral Recall, but with two blue you know that your opponent has a possible counter spell open. Could it be, oh, it look like he's, looks like he's changing his mind. Could it be another creature to keep, keep pressure on? Could it be a Mind Twist maybe? He's also playing with a Mind Twist in the deck. The, I think the Mind Twist and Demonic are the two cards. Oh, look at this, playing a Strip Mind. So maybe he looked up the Strip Mind. And can Carl now find a land? He's looking at his hand and passing turn, so he's not finding land. And now can Martin take advantage of this? Playing another Mox. So it's quite a lot of mana here. Attacking with the Mishra's Factory. Will we see a Disenchant? We're not seeing a Disenchant. Carl's going to 18 here. And taking another damage here, Martin playing another Urnum. Look at that Urnum number three. So he's very lucky with that, playing the big boys out. I do believe he has no cards in hand anymore. So if Carl can just find a solution for the Urnum, things are not looking too bad. And playing a copy artifact on one of the Moxen. And what we know is that with Carl's deck, we've seen his picture, we've seen the list. Um, he wants to play out his tomes. I believe I see one in his hand there. So Martin probably knows this as well. Knows that four mana is kind of like this key number here. Now attacking for six. And he's taking the six damage. That means he's going to 12 life. And he's also playing his Suchi. Wow, he's just top decking pure muscle here. And that can be very that can be very good here for Martin because the pressure is fully on Carl here. Sitting on 12 life and already burned through two swords to plowsiers. And wow, look at that playing a balance, and he's completely back in the game. Wow. Amazing here. Oh, 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 and that's that's pretty bad news here um, for Martin. Although, on the other hand, he still has that factory to bash with, and both players hardly have any cards in hand. Look at that, one card each. Another attack means he's going to six, I believe. Another attack, he's going to four life. Will he get finished by a Mishra's factory? He has three cards in hand now. But just passing turn, could have a disenchant, of course. And there we see another Swords. Is, this, is there a counter spell? Interesting, there's a Hercules Recall, means he gets to take it. Oh no, he doesn't, because there is a counter spell. So this is going very quickly. I know that Martin is a big fan of instant spells. He loves his Hercules Recalls, at least in this deck. It's one of those really nice trick cards. And he wanted to use it to save his factory. Unfortunately, there was a counter spell. But Carl is sitting on just for life and can Martin keep the pressure on? That's a big question. A brain geyser, if this resolves, and it does. That's very good news here for Martin and could be a game changer because now he's filling his hand again, I believe with four cards. And that could be the game changer here. Let's see if Martin can find something useful. Tapping the mana. And okay, that, I believe that's a fireball. It's hard to see with the glare. And that means that Martin wins the first game. So it's 1-0 here for the four color spice player. And uh, these players are gonna go to their sideboards and we'll see them again in game number two. Game number two with Carl, the player on the right, playing the deck, the player from Belgium, 
And uh, he gets to start because he lost that first game. Let's see if they're going to keep their hands. And of course, when you have a Library of Alexandria, it's a no-brainer. You're going to keep your hand. Um, and let's see. And if Martin can now... And there it is. If he can find his Black Vices, he's actually going to punish Carl for drawing cards. So that's going to be interesting. And Carl, of course, taking his first two damage here, going to 18... And let's see, there Martin taking a damage, playing a Demonic Tutor. So he's actually drawing pretty good this game so far. I mean, a turn one Black Vice against your opponent with a Library of Alexandria, and now finding a turn two Demonic Tutor. And look at the cards Carl cannot counter at the moment, so it would make sense to fetch an Ancestral Recall. There is a Disenchant end of turn. And I wonder what decision Martin has made. And look at that. Strip mining, yeah, probably the library. That looks like the best target in this case. Passing turn again. And that makes me wonder if he maybe looked up the strip mine because of the Library of Alexandria. So that was probably the better choice. Both of these players, very experienced, very good players. Um, whenever I see them in tournaments, they usually reach top eight. And in this case, they have both reached the finals. And there is a lightning bolt from Martin just do dealing some damage. And I believe he's also playing with side blast, so he can actually just uh, do a lot of damage just with direct damage alone. And we saw that in game one, finishing it with the fireball. Both players are playing with fireball, by the way. And let's see what Martin can do. Still on 20 life, I believe, or is it 19 passing turn here? And there Carl using his City of Brass, so he's going to 11, and he's playing a Giant Grove, or sorry, <laughs> he's playing a Regrove uh, on the Library of Alexandria here. Would be interesting to see a Giant Grove coming out of nowhere, but uh, this is a, oh look, what's he going to do? This is going to be interesting. So the Library of Alexandria back in the game. And is he going to play a very big Brain Geyser? And it is a very big Brain Geyser. And can he counter? Playing a counter spell here. But there are still two blue mana open from Martin. Can he counter? He cannot counter. Ay, 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 ay. And that means it's looking, well, I wouldn't say dire, but it's not looking great for Martin. If he could have gotten the... Oh, look at this. Playing a Suchi now. But the Library of Alexandria is going to give Carl so many answers to the problems. Look at that A Divine offering. We talked about that before. And that's going to give him four fresh life. But there's that Hercules recall again. You've got to love the recall, you know. When you see a player like Martin play with the recall, you're like, Oh yeah, the Hercules recall is a pretty good card. And countering that playing or not. No, it looks like the recall is still on the stack. And Carl is deciding if he wants to respond. He doesn't. He lets it resolve. Does mean that Carl doesn't get the life and the Suchi goes back into Martin's hand. And playing out a Mox Jet passing turn. Playing out the Suchi again. Drawing a card there. Going to eight cards. Probably going to counter here or disenchant or do whatever. I mean, he can just keep finding answers. He's actually allowing him to keep the Suchi, not using his mana drain, because I believe there's a mana drain in his hand, not using it. Playing a Black Lotus, finding a counter spell there. And a Fireball of Four, interesting choice. So deciding to keep his counter spells for bigger threats and there is a Urnum Jin. And is he going to counter the Urnum Jin? Taking a damage, going to 10 life here, playing a Mana Drain. And I do see a, a book in his hand, a Tome. So he's probably going to use the Mana to play the Tome. And look at that, a Lightning Bolt to the face. It was hard to see, but it was a Lightning Bolt to Carl. And that means he's on 7, so pretty low already. Remember, he's one game down. And look at that, playing the Tome. 
and playing a factory now passing turn and this is this is interesting because Kyle is pretty low and that's kind of a problem playing a regrowth is he just going to pick another lightning bolt Ah, oh, he's choosing the strip mine and the question is can Carl still respond he's allowing it strip mines in strip mine takes care of the library of Alexandria and that's probably the best decision but when my opponent also has a book in play I always kind of feel like he's low on life let's just put some more bolts on him but um, this is probably the correct play oh and look at that he has a shatter to take care of the tome so that's pretty good so that means that kind of that that whole card machine the drawing engine of Carl has been disabled okay scratch that it's back online <laughs> he's just, I guess remember he's playing with four of those books so those books are are so important for his game plan and it's going to be interesting here to see how this will develop paying four to draw another card here at the end of the turn and it looks like that Carl has kind of gotten the control that he wants And that could mean that this game could last long and this is interesting he's attacking so obviously he has a disenchant or a swords for when martin activates that factory and that's why he's taking the damage he's saying you know what i'm not gonna sacrifice my factory here so he's taking the damage and there is a urnum Jin. first drawing another card and then finding an answer already having the answer does mean for life now for martin but that doesn't really matter it's all about the control in the game and it must be very frustrating to see that you take care of the Library of Alexandria and you take care of the uh, the tome and then your opponent simply plays another tome and just keeps drawing cards. And look at that, an Ancestral Recall, even more card advantage. And this is the deck in full swing, just drawing cards endlessly and controlling the game. And what you saw in game one, really that overrun tactic by Martin really paid off. But in this game, it looks like he's not going to make that happen. And there, Martin decides to finally make the block. And there is a disenchant. And you kind of know that's going to happen. But at a certain point, you have to decide, okay, I'm just going to go for it. And at least it's going to cost him a disenchant. Problem, of course, being, and look at that interesting city in a bottle from the sideboard against probably those City of Brasses and those Urnum Gins. And he's actually discarding the balance, having so much control that he doesn't even need that card. And look at that, a circle of protection red against the direct damage. So, I mean, I think this, this is pretty much in the back for Carl. Of course, things can always happen. Probably end, end turn is going to draw another card. Look at that, playing a disenchant. Not even drawing an extra card here. Interesting. Probably has enough in hand. As is. And there is a black vice. So that can at least that can deal some damage. But there's a quick response that Define offering. Meaning Carl is gaining a life actually. Instead of losing life here, going to 8. Drawing a card here and turn with the book and another one and I think that's the story of this game. Carl has had so much card advantage hitting him now for five so he's going to two life. And I think this is pretty much game. Let's see what he can do. Will there be a time twister or something? That would be pretty cool. There's actually a fireball of two. Obviously with the circle of protection red it's not much. But hey it's your last turn. You want to do something. And now there's the all-out attack. And that means it's 1-1. One, one. So we are going to a third game here in the finals of the Frost Giant Cup. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Will the deck player win? Or will the four-color spice deck from Martin take victory? It's the Netherlands 
versus Belgium here in the finals of the Frost Giant Cup. The last game of the Frost Giant Cup. So this is game number three. Exciting stuff here. And we've got Martin, the four-color spice player from the Netherlands, on the play against Carl from Brussels in Belgium. And um, he just won the game, so it's 1-1. But who will win the match? That's a big question. And who will win the Frost Giant Cup 2019? Here in Hilversum, the Netherlands. Let's see. There's a Tundra from Carl. Play, not, not playing a Black Lotus. He can still play it, though. <laughs> playing the Mox Sapphire. And that means he has counter capability. And they're passing turn here. And look at that. There's another strip mine. And Martin really knows how to find those strip mines. And probably, oh, I wanted to say, probably going to play a creature, but he's not interesting. Uh, just taking care of the mana base here of Carl with a Shatter and a Lightning Bolt. So that means that Carl goes to 17. Finding a Loa here. Oh, that is bad luck for Martin. He has already used his Strip Mine early in the aggressive game. And this is probably going to help Carl. And remember, he has... Oh, look at that. He has a strip mine of his own now in his hand. Also has that Lotus still. So it looks like he's got enough land. And with that active library of Alexandria, he's probably just going to find even more cards. And I'm curious to see what Martin can actually do against this. Passing turn now. And... Playing against it. the deck player is heavy, I mean, difficult enough, but playing against him with an active library of Alexandria is not impossible, but it comes close to impossible. And he's wondering, am I going to play out a land or am I going to play out another land, which is a strip mine? Choosing to play out the Volcanic Island passing turn here. Probably doesn't really mind if Martin would activate the Mishra's Factory here. Playing a Mishra's Factory of his own here. Discarding a Basic Plains passing turn. Playing a Diamond Valley now, Martin. One of his signature cards. And that's kind of what I like about a player like Martin. Is you can see his personality in his deck. So you can see that he likes Diamond Valley. That he likes Hercules Recall. Um, so you can kind of see those cards coming back in his builds. And tapping for four now. And there's the book. Probably a counter spell now. I think. Tapping two blue. And there is a counter spell. Playing another factory. And let's see what's going to happen. And there's that end of turn Library of Alexandria activation. And there's the strip mine. Maybe taking care of the Diamond Valley. There's a circle of protection red. No counter spell from Martin. Oh, there is a counter spell here. There's the mana drain. And will the mana drain get countered? And it's met by a counter spell from Carl. And that's of course is the problem. Is that again, and we saw actually saw that in game two as well with Carl. As soon as he's kind of got his drawing engine going, um, the deck player will have all the answers. And this is interesting playing a tranquility from the sideboard, probably to take care of that circle protection red, and it's actually working. I almost want to say so, there is still hope because there are just so many cards in that um, in the hand of Carl here. And he's playing very steady the whole day long. Obviously, both players have. And there is an Urn of Gin hitting the table. Probably met here by Swords of Plowsiers. And as you can see, Martin is using his Diamond Valley. So that means that the Urn is not removed from the game, but goes to the graveyard instead. And I do believe that uh, Martin is playing with a Time Twister. So that way he can twist it back into his deck. And here tapping for four, will we see a book? Or no, it's just an attack actually. And look at that life total, pretty low already. 
and there is a Chaos Orb. Are we going to see a flip? We haven't actually seen a flip in this finals, but it looks like it's met with a Disenchant upon activation. Actually a Divine Offering, that means two more life here. That means it's going to 19, I believe. Or 18. Yeah, 19. <laughs> okay. And let's look at that. Tapping another blue. Of course, why not drawing some more cards here? And I think these these this game and the game number two really shows the power of card advantage. And that was something when I started playing in 1995, nobody really cared much for card advantage. Nobody thought about it. And now it's a big deal, obviously. Playing the book here. And I am a little surprised, because you would kind of expect Carl to just attack with the factories. Although, Martin, of course, has two factories in hand as well, so maybe he's just first stocking up on disenchants and answers before he wants to do that. Drawing an extra card here with the Library of Alexandria and the book. So drawing two extra cards. And of course your card for turn. There you go. And I do see a fireball there in the hand, in Carl's hand. So maybe he's just collecting enough mana to just play a huge fireball. And playing a regrowth on the circle of protection red. And he just wants to be absolutely sure that there's nothing that Martin can do. Because that's an extra precaution when you're already on 18. And you have all the cards in hand that you need. But still choosing to pick up that COP red. And it's probably the best play. Playing a Mishra's Factory here. Factory number 3. Is he going to animate one and attack? Or... Playing a demonic tutor, and this is kind of, you know, when you're when you're playing Carl and he's he has this going this draw engine going again that we saw in game two again. It's it's difficult to not feel like you're a passenger in his game, and there is a mind twist taking care of the entire hand of Martin. So what he's doing is kind of he's building. his advantage he's just building it out milking it out i should say and we see martin kind of trying to now gain some life in response to that strip of his mistress factory using the diamond valley so you do see the white dice there it's on one life but obviously it's not on one life so I'll see if i can add a life counter for game number three so that you can see his life total because now he's going past 20 life mark. So he's still got quite a lot of life. Drawing a card here. And there we see some more aggression now from Carl. Really deciding just, just to go full into it. The time has come to put pressure on. He probably has disenchants and swords in his hand. Here we go, playing a disenchant, and of course, uh, Martin using the Diamond Valley again to gain some life. So that's gonna give him some time, but what he really needs here is extra cards, and he kind of needs a miracle. Obviously, you're in the final, so you're gonna continue to play on, and you're gonna try to play to your outs. But it's going to be very difficult for him. And he's now on 11 life, it seems, because we see the two white dice coming back. There's a balance. That's pretty nice. I expect a counterspell, though. And there's a counterspell. And there's a red elemental blast, like in this. And there's a mana drain. And I'm liking this play, because probably Martin had the red elemental blast in his hand for a while. I was really thinking, okay, I'm going to combine the two. And that's it. So that means that Carl, congratulations, Carl from Belgium with very good play the entire day. Um, you've won this tournament. You are the winner of the Frost Giant Cup 2019. Congratulations on your victory. 
And so we have come to an end. This was the finals and also the final match of the Frost Giant Cup 2019. And we have Carl from Belgium as the winner playing the deck. Now, if you've uh, enjoyed this, seeing this tournament report all the way from round one up to the finals, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to support the channel, uh, you can do so by becoming a member, liking it, leaving a comment and spreading the word. That really helps. The channel is growing nicely and I'm hoping to reach that thousand subscriber count soon. For now, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now. And if you want to see more tournament reports, you can also take a look on the channel and you'll find some more interesting tournaments from the Netherlands. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.